When I was 17 years old, I had a Bible thrown at my head, and I was invited not to return to my church youth group. Suffice it to say that I took them up on that offer. The problem started when I started thinking for myself. For one, my parents sent me to this private school where we were taught to look at everything with a critical eye, not to take anything at face value, and to arrive at our own conclusions about things based on a thorough analysis of the evidence. And then I'd go to church and have my youth leader tell me that, contrary to the cases made in my science textbooks, the earth was actually 5,000 years old and that people used to ride around on dinosaurs like the Lone Ranger or something. He even told me once that scientists were conspiring together to fabricate this so-called fossil record to convince the blind, unthinking masses that the planet was a byproduct of evolution and was much older than the Bible told us it was. Yes, there literally were two people named Adam and Eve who got tricked by a talking snake. Okay, I'd say, but who did their kids marry? If they were the only ones on the planet and assuming they'd have to have sex to keep the species going, doesn't that mean we're all descendants of incest? Mm, let's put a pin in that one and move on. But I didn't want to move on. It didn't make sense, and I wanted answers. I couldn't get over what an asshole God was made out to be in the Bible. Smiting people, afflicting them with diseases, setting them up for tests of faith nobody should have to endure. And hello, how about the whole Garden of Eden story? I can just see it now. Okay, kids, here's the deal, says God. All of this is yours. You don't even have to work for it. But there's just this one thing. There's always one thing. See you in the middle of the garden? Ooh, yeah, says Adam, licking his chops. That looks awesome. Yeah, says God. It's the best one here. Don't touch it. Why not? Because. Because why? Because if you eat that fruit, uh, you'll know everything, says God. That sounds like a good thing, says Eve. Well, it's not, says God. Why not? Add that to the list of things you don't need to know. But wait, says Eve, if we're the only ones here and we can't touch that tree, and if you made all of this, why bother making the tree? Well, says God, because I need an illustration to help demonstrate the nature of free will and to point out that no matter how much you humans ever have and no matter how good your life is, there will always be something else you want. Do what? says Adam. Never mind, says God. Just don't touch it, okay? Feels like a setup, if you ask me. Then there's Noah, the great grandfather of biblical do over stories. He and his family were supposedly the only human beings spared the devastation of the great flood. Obviously, he had some serious leverage with the big guy, or maybe he just had some incredible carpentry skills. But it turns out Noah was quite the lush. After the family made their way back to dry land, he got his drink on and passed out in his tent with his junk hanging out. So this is the best God could do? This is the one guy whose family wasn't worth sending to a watery grave on the entire planet. And while we're on the subject of the ark, there's not enough fuzzy math in the world to explain how it is that two of every single creature fit on this boat built by hand by one guy without power tools. Well... God is magic, we argue. Maybe God gave Noah superhuman construction powers. Or maybe he gave him some kind of holy shrink ray to miniaturize all the critters to pocket size. Maybe he dehydrated them and kept them in little baggies until they got to land. And then sprinkled them back to their reconstituted selves. Fine. But if God could do all that, why not just zap the boat into existence in the first place? And if there's not normally enough water on the planet to flood everything, where did all the extra water come from? And where did it go when the flood receded? And did he actually have to trap all of the birds, or did they just fly around and land on the water? And what about the fish, the whales, protozoa, land-dwelling bacteria? We'll get back to you on that. 